cryptocurrency. What's happening in the crypto space? Well, I don't have any like news news. Yeah. Uh, in terms of AfriCrypt and all that kind of stuff. Are those dudes still alive? Uh, well. No news. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no news is good news. <laughs> no news is good news. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's good news for who? I don't know. So um, what I was wondering, right, is yes. that like you know ethereum has been making news and been making waves in, the, in this whole crypto ecosystem mm -hmm. right so you know that they move into the proof of stake yes. framework right yes. could you just impart Elaborate. some of your wisdom and enlightenment on us plebs yes um what does it actually mean well so basically um i'll take a step step or two back i mean i'm not the expert on this but this is this is what i know so when ethereum first came out or when the developers launched ethereum yeah. their plan was always to go to proof of stake but start with proof of work first so to explain what those two are proof of work is right if you do some work for me and you can prove it i will reward you for doing that so basically this is what um ethereum mining is it's um uh, doing some work, solving some problems using a graphics card, and then passing the result back to the mining pool. And if it's if you if you solved it first, then um, you'll get a reward, and that's how you um, uh, earn a cryptocurrency from from uh, Ethereum mining. Okay, so that's proof of work. Proof of stake is. Um, slightly different you become a validator on the ethereum network and when there's a transaction uh, that needs to be done then what you do is you validate it it's basically the same thing as uh, not mining but it's you validating the mm -hmm. transaction and i think there's like a minimum number of validators that need to um to be to validate a transaction and then it can it can go through uh, and to be a validator in proof of stake, you have to stake 32 Ethereum, yeah, which is a large amount. And uh, then you have to set up a machine that is the validator, like a, a, a computer that's the validator that's on the network. <coughs> and it has to be there almost 100% of the time, 99.9%. Uh, .9%. So... What and if it? you don't, if you, if you, I think if you fail to, if you're unavailable or you fail to validate or you um, validate incorrectly, in other words, you validate something that should have been, shouldn't have been validated, you um, uh, potentially could lose your stake or a part of your stake. 32 um, Ethereums, you're saying? Yes. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and well, the current price is $3,200. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Three thousand two hundred dollars ish. Per oh, that's per Ethereum. That's, that's, per per that's, Ether, sorry. Per Ether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a bit of an investment. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's a little bit. So so yeah. what does it mean like in the grand so, scheme well, of things? So well it means that a lot of the people that are mining at the moment will yep. not pretend okay, so here's here's a little bit of a thing. Is that Ethereum uh, the developers of Ethereum are very, very uh, notorious for being very, very late on implementing changes in the network. So things mm -hmm. take years. They'll be talking about something, oh, it's going to come in next January or whatever, and three years down the line, you still it still hasn't yeah. come in. Right. So proof of stake is, is one of those things that they said they were going to do that's taken years and years. Um, I think in the beginning they said they were going to go proof of stake within six months. And Ethereum, I think, launched in 2017. So yeah. we like four years into it already wow. so they were saying that um proof of stake would come in by uh, by october this year but it looks like it's going to be pushed out to at least uh the first quarter of next year and some people are speculating 2023 right yeah but if you're going on what the ethereum developers are saying at the moment this time next year you won't be mining ethereum anymore so all the miners that are currently mining Ethereum uh, won't be mining Ethereum anymore because it'll be proof of stake and uh, they will have to go and mine other cryptocurrencies or other cryptocurrencies that um, operate. Is this the right approach? Work. Uh, what, you mean a right approach from Ethereum or? Yes. 
Uh, well, what's stopping people just going? You know what? It's just too much. I'm gonna go somewhere easier. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I was, yeah. I mean, some people might say, "Oh, I don't want to stake thirty two Ethereum." Um, yeah, I don't know, but don't forget there are, there, there there are lots of people out there. They've been mining for quite a while. Um, mm. Basically, sold the house and their cars to buy machines to. Um, to mine Ethereum, and some have seen their ass, and some of them have made it, and they've, um, because there was a bit of a downturn uh, 18 months ago, or two years ago, and there was a bit of a, what you would call a bear market, and Ethereum price dropped down to almost nothing, and guys were turning off their machines, because they, the amount of um, uh uh, profit they were making from their mining wasn't even covering their electricity costs. Yeah. So a lot of people turned off their um, their machines. Other people were cashing in their Ethereum, even at that low price, that, that to um, to pay for their so they could continue mining, but they were cashing out Ethereum to cover their costs. So obviously, they lost their Ethereum like in the number of ether that they were carrying uh, other people were able to ride the ride the storm and uh, didn't sell their ether their cryptocurrency and when it went from where it was at rock bottom to where it was two months ago mm -hmm. two and a half months ago up at uh, um, four thousand dollars over four thousand dollars in ether they were laughing all the way to the bank so yeah so um is it the right way to go lester i don't know I don't but know. it's but it's definitely going to disadvantage smaller miners like smaller scale miners well you, look i you, suppose yeah, if, if you commit to this you've, you've, gonna, you've committed right yeah if you've you, gone and borrowed money if you've gone and borrowed money you've worked out a business plan and you've gone and borrowed money and bought equipment and now you're mining ether and tomorrow they say ah oh, mining is done and your business model is based on the profitability from Ethereum. Uh, if you now go and mine an alternate coin, say Ravencoin, or depending what cards you've got, different algorithms um, are, 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 are more profitable to mine. But let's use Ravencoin as an example. And you switch to Ravencoin, you probably add about 60% of the profitability that you add now. So that could break your... That could break your um, your business model, and then on top of that, there are a lot of people speculating that we almost uh, soon we're going to be going into a bear market, which means the opposite of a bull market. The bear market being that the price of um, um, cryptocurrencies are going to drop, mm -hmm. and if that mm -hmm. happens, then obviously then your profitability is further reduced. So yeah, yeah. So I suppose you've got to. Some people are hedging their bets, and other people are taking a more conservative um, approach to it. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, time well, will tell. Thank, time thanks will for tell. that explanation, Lester. What do you think? Uh, I think my view is on... Uh, this is typical crypto, right? Yeah. <laughs> Anything's going to happen. We don't know yet. And there, there's, there's, there's ups and downs. And I'm looking across all of them at the moment. They've all mm -hmm. gone up in recent months. Yeah. Despite uh, some prevalence some time ago, and with all the movements of Mr. Tesla, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, yeah. You know, the, we thought we'd see trends, and we did see, but they were very short-lived trends, uh, based yeah. on actions and and announcements and other things going on. Yeah. So this, for me, is just another. It's just another thing. It's a. It, I, I'm, there, there's there's still going to be other currencies that are easier to do, and and. I suppose it depends if you're going to go into this market. What do you want from it? Do you want a short-term return, or do you want a longer-term, less risky return? It 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 varies. Well, I suppose so if you if it's you like take, a normal stock market. Exactly. I was just going to say it's very very similar to a stock market thing. You um, buy into you buy a share of a company that you believe in what their strategy is, what their expansion plan, uh, pl uh, plan is going to be yeah, for yeah. the next <clears> couple <throat> of years, or, you know, the, you know, the fact that they're an institution, you know, in the country, um, you know, like, oh, you know, one of the top 40 or the top 10 or whatever you want to use as your metric and you buy your share 
or you buy shares into it, you invest money in there, and that's a long-term investment. So in other words, you just leave it there. You don't worry about the ups and downs. You, you know, there's no emotion yeah. in it, except that you banking on the fact that on history, that the stock exchange grows by a certain percentage every 10 years or whatever. Yeah. And you're investing and you're saying, oh, okay, in 10 or 15 or 20 years, theoretically, I would have made a fair amount of um, uh, profits. And, you know, that's an investment for later in life or whatever. Um, or you could be the, the trader. In other words, you're looking at every day or every couple of days. Um, and riding the waves. Uh, yeah. And then having to control your emotion when the when the prices are dropping and making uh, the right yeah. decisions and but, using... But this, the, crypt, crypto is not for everybody because the peaks and falls are a lot sharper than a stock exchange peak yeah. and fall. Yeah, it's very volatile. Definitely, crashes. definitely. And but I, I think, mean, you, the massive gains and massive losses in a very short space of time. Yeah, and um, and and uh, and I suppose with um, with the stock market, theoretically, you can go do some research and say, okay, um, this company uh, Woolworths, whatever. Uh, I see mm. they're getting into sustainable and they're going carbon neutral, and and you think, okay, that's great because that's going to build confidence. Um, uh, in 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 the stock in the in the, in the stockholder uh, stockholders stakeholders stakeholders so, <laughs> stakeholders and um, so you know sure. like oh, okay I want to buy into that too so you can do some research and you can like you can say okay this is a solid investment whereas like with the, with cryptocurrency you don't actually know what's driving it it's sentiment it's it's um, and uh, like you see applications like, yeah well. like <clears throat> yeah but I mean Musk. Musk goes and tweets something and, you know, everything 30%. goes, exactly, <laughs> exactly, and, and, and tomorrow, and then the next time they're saying, no, they're not, they're not taking Bitcoin as, as legal tender for Teslas anymore, and, and you like, see it drops Ooh. again, so like, I mean, how could you predict what Elon's going to say tomorrow, so, you know, the, you know, that is an issue, and like you rightly say, Oleg, is that a lot of people are buying into cryptocurrencies based on the utility of that cryptocurrency. Yeah. So, like Ethereum, um, uh, you know, the you know the, the the applications, the smart contracts, and all that that are built on top of that, which is something a little bit different to Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't have that. What, but what uh, Bitcoin does have is the is the limited supply that drives up the value, pretty much like gold. Where Ethereum is like there's an unlimited supply, but there's utility in it. In other words, they're building smart contracts on top of it. They're building other applications on top of it, games, NFTs, whatever it is, right? And that's what people are buying into is the, like you say. And uh, often that's what people will do is that when, almost like having an IPO for uh, for a company for, yeah. on a stock market, they have these um, coins or these, these, these uh, tokens or coins, yeah. cryptocurrencies that have been developed They've been put out into the wild. People have seen, oh, okay, this is what their manifesto is or what their um, business plan is. Okay, I like that idea. I like that concept. Um, they buy into it. People stake some 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 um, some of their cryptocurrency that they buy because you know that's what they do. Is they're like so? They're, I'm launching a cryptocurrency. I encourage people to come and buy the cryptocurrency. I encourage them to stake it with me. In other words, yeah, yeah. not trade in it buy some of it, hold it, mm -hmm. and then I'll give you a little bit of an incentive. So I'll give you some interest or yeah, yeah. APY or whatever it is. And by you staking your currency that you your, um, that you bought um, is like you um, instilling confidence in the, in the product, yeah, yeah. if you want to call yeah. it, or in the cryptocurrency. Yeah. And that's what people see. And then what they do is they then launch that that cryptocurrency onto an exchange like Binance or uh, Coinbase or Crypto.com or whatever. Yeah. And that's like an IPO kind of... Kind of approach, you know, yeah. You know, like a parallel to an IPO. Probably wrong, but, you know, that's why... Because then what people do is, they, oh, this thing's going to list on Binance and then people buy it and then you hear this and then you see this pump and dump. Pump and dump, yeah. You see the so pump and dump. Pump and dump. Yeah, so it's... Yeah, I mean... Trademark. You, <laughs> yeah, Lester, yeah. what's what's the conversation uh, around that space in the UK? I mean, is UK thinking about some sort of a digital currency link or no? 
I've not heard anything. Okay, um, so it's all there's, quiet. There's other news. Yeah, it's all quiet. But certainly the, the interest in uh, the, the crypto world and how it's evolving, and how it, it, there, there is a lot of interest in it. There's a lot of talk about that. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of publicity around it, should I say. There's a lot of articles. There's a lot of opinion. But uh, there's nothing really where people are surging forward since since sell out when it hits whatever it hit a couple yeah, yeah. Like 18 years ago um those people have taken the money and reinvested it back in cryptocurrencies in different ways and different versions mm. as well as other things they still play all the stock markets and, and other thing and other minerals and that that still goes on so the but i think a lot of people are just waiting to see what next they're not buying the hype they, they yeah. understand it they, they can see how this is evolving, and that's interesting. But I'm kind of in the same boat, going, well, well hang on, this is great, but what next? Because yeah. there will be something next and something next. So what? Yeah. Who's gonna who's gonna succeed here? Who's gonna fail? So because you can't you can't just carry on this on forever. There has to be some sort of consolidation in the space. Yeah. So and, blockchain... it, and it has to do with what they're going to do with the, the technology. Mm. So blockchain has a lot of applications, like real life applications, real like value creating applications, right? But my question is, is like, would countries like UK? I'm pretty sure eventually the word go to like completely digital currency on the blockchain in terms of like, let's just call it an e pound, right? Electronic pound. Um, or bit pound or whatever, you know, it's like where you can trace the motion uh, of the pound uh, with the hands of different I, I individuals. Think, I think you're right, but I think, yeah, I mean, UK or many other countries are the same. Yeah. But uh, you can't commit to that fully mm, because yeah. there are always yeah. going to be a certain percentage of the population that go, this technology stuff, I don't trust it. I just want hard cash. Mm -hmm. But do you so, think... Do you think UK is already there in terms of being able to trace the money flows with that precision, right? Let's say, like, you most likely can trace, yeah. like, money moving yeah, from yeah. one account to the next. It's, like, pretty simple. Or jumping between hundreds of accounts. But what if you could have a way to actually, like, have the entire history of that one pound, right? How it changed hands you know, since its inception. If, if there's value in knowing the history, then absolutely mm. there's somebody on it. <laughs> what do you think? I'm just saying you can't commit 100% to this. Because yeah, yeah the not whole at the moment. Not at the moment, right? Mm. Yeah, so, but until that last person who wants to hold on to their cash and not have a, any sort well, of digital transaction, yeah, I, you can't. I, yeah, but I tell you what, mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the way I see it. Yeah. I think there is... Um, opportunity in continents like Africa, in countries that fall on the continent of Africa, for cryptocurrency, to, for yeah. finance, put it that way, money, handling of money, to skip a generation. For sure. Yeah, okay. I agree. So uh, like, like in South Africa, yeah. you, you know, like you went from um, people in rural areas not even having telephones because the infrastructure is not there, they can't afford it, it's too expensive, and you went from having no communication mechanism to cell phones. Yeah, yeah. Right. I think this is the same thing. You know, in Africa, I would say a large portion of the population doesn't even have a bank account. Yeah, but you know, you know right. what's an interesting thing about that, right? Yeah. So. In many countries in Africa, the financial transactions, right, are done through airtime. That, so, yeah. like, so yeah, like yeah. go figure, because it's like it's so easy to transfer, like, let's say, a hundred naira worth of airtime to somebody else, or two hundred, yeah. or five hundred. It's like, and people accept it as legal payment. Yeah. Well, and, but 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 that's what I'm saying is that you have the ability now to have cryptocurrency become the vehicle that these people yeah, yeah. use and they don't have to go into a bank. They don't have to open a bank you account. You just buy a cell phone, just boom. you got a cell phone. Like yeah. I suppose like the e-wallet thing is very, very similar to, to, to that. Is that like I can pay someone that doesn't have a bank account um, a certain amount of money into an e-wallet. They don't have a bank account. 
they go to an ATM and they put in the token number yeah, yeah, yeah. that was yeah. SMS to them and yeah. they can draw cash yeah. from the bank, right? They yeah. don't need a bank account. But what I'm saying is that cryptocurrency can become the neck the thing that people that don't have bank accounts use to operate. Because mm. like you would say is that, you know, maybe they're using airtime and some places access or some places don't. A lot of places it's in Africa use airtime. Okay, there you it's go. It's like, it's unbelievable. It's like, why airtime? Because it's like, you don't need to go to the bank. And I mean, yeah. like, in Africa, it's a problem to go to the bank because they're not everywhere. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You but, know, but, but, but there's a cell phone reception everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But only enough, <laughs> the bank, the, the, the government could turn around tomorrow and say that cell phone companies aren't, uh, sh should stop that. Yeah, they as could. an example, they could. I yeah. mean, they could. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. And I mean, it's like, but this, this vehicle is there at the moment, right? So yeah, I'm just saying that's what people are. Yeah, are and using. I, yeah, and I think because because one of the drawbacks of like what Lester was saying is that you know you can't go in full hog because uh, what about the people that hey, don't have a bank account, don't have this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, only uh, operating cash, and uh, you know, like how do you how do you create? Uh, yeah, well, in Africa, like you don't even have you know, like the people don't even have a bank account. You but just the question for the question is, do you need a bank account? To well, like, do you need a bank account to actually handle electronic, um, electronic? Very money? good point. Like, do you need to have one? Like, oh, you mean like a physical building bank? Or are you yeah, talking no, about an institution no, as a ba like the bank institution? Yeah, the banking institution. Do you need to have a bank account? I mean, like, why well, not have a transaction system that does not depend on a bank account? Well, uh, I think that's what cryptocurrency is. I mean, it's you know, exactly. I suppose that's, that's, that's where we're going. But, I mean, you know, if you're looking at around the world, there's, like, so many things. Like, they banning cryptocurrency in some countries. But do uh, you think they're afraid? Other countries are, are adopting it. Yeah, of course. They're afraid of losing they, they, control. They, they can't control it, so yeah. it's a threat. Yeah. yeah. 